Hi, my name is Bob Grinier and I'm a volunteer with the Martin Fleischmann Memorial Project. So thank you everyone who helped uh, raise the funds to get an improved endoscope camera to run in one of these holes in the supernova reactor. Here it is, it's arrived and uh, we're gonna uh, take it out of its box. It's uh, quite nicely packaged. Um, Okay, find more amazing items, a bit of advertisement there. Okay, so there it is. Uh, it has a Wi-Fi transmitter and battery uh, unit. Uh, okay, that's uh, just turned it on. I guess that there's the on switch over there. So there it is, it's got the bright lights. I think there's probably, there we go, there's some uh, thing to turn off the light, I guess, is that? Turn off the light. Oh no, that's a light on there. Uh, we have another light on here, not really useful for what I want. Um, and Okay, so that turns the brightness up and down on the endoscope's light, even to the off position. And this is, I think, some sort of mechanism for taking photos, and this is for zooming, I think. And I guess that's a digital zoom. I don't think there's any optical zoom in there, but we will find out. And on the side here, it has the on and off button. So I guess that turns the Wi-Fi maybe on and off. Uh, we shall find that out. Oh, it certainly turns the camera on. And this actually, okay, so we have a charging port on the back here. And I guess this is a micro USB to charge it. And we have a, a range of attachments here things like a, a mirror and a hook and so forth. So we, maybe we can get different angles when we're looking inside the reactor or just for other purposes, I guess. Um, anyway, uh, first thing I'm gonna do is to check the diameter of the head there because that is what we were trying to. Uh, um, uh, uh, we had a problem with this actually, sorry, um, that this one has a slightly larger diameter than the one that I had before and I can already see that that is the case, it's just apparently half a mil more. So in the uh, reactor, we're gonna have to ream out a little bit of one of these holes on the backside, countersink that. And so uh, let's just confirm that that is, uh, uh, yeah, it's definitely over the, uh, the eight mil there, so. Um, but that shouldn't be too hard to fix. Uh, we might even be able to mount it outside depending on the field of view from the camera itself. Okay, so I'm gonna run some tests with this and what I've got is this old uh, Note 2. Uh, I use this for audio recording. Uh, it's an old phone, but you can pick these up very, very reasonably. It doesn't matter if they're cracked. Um, they're very, very capable phones and uh, we're gonna see if this can capture recordings from this device and see what frame rate we have for the various resolutions. So I'll see you a bit later. Now the previous endoscope that we purchased, uh, it was affordable and uh, it had a USB connection and the reason I like this option, uh, if it actually delivered the frame rates uh, that would be useful, uh, was that there was no Wi-Fi involved, so the, you know, given that the, the supernova reactor works at the same frequency as the Wi-Fi and the typical Wi-Fi uh, devices, um, I thought there might be some interference there. And additionally, the, um, the fact that this is a USB device means that I could uh, combine it into the live stream. But all is not lost. Uh, this camera can be used to monitor other parts of the process or other instruments. Uh, during the experiment that don't need uh, much more than a 6.25 frames per second update. And what was quite nice with these endoscope cameras, not all of them, but they can have these semi-rigid uh, wire sort of uh, that connects to the camera. And so you can position something and it just sits there and that's uh, quite useful. Um, now the complication with the um, Wi-Fi device, as I just said, is it might get interfered with. However, this has a five meter cable and uh, this is the Wi-Fi transmitter and the phone, I could actually put the whole thing in a box uh, uh, in another room. And so um, hopefully there will be no uh, communication problems between this and the phone and the phone actually is your recording device. So I'm gonna run a little test here uh, with the camera coming in and out of a, a reaction vessel just to see uh, what that looks like and uh, see what frame rates we have and whether we have any dropped frames. 
Okay, so when you launch the Android app, uh, it has a little welcome screen here and I can press start. And uh, you're getting your live image there. So if I move that around, you'll see that it's uh, moving around. Uh, it seems to be quite responsive. Um, this is only a 720p screen. If I press this button here, it takes a picture and I can press the button on the phone there, it takes a picture and uh, you can also start a recording here and uh, that is recording onto the phone. Now I have found that if I press the 90 degrees button or the settings button on this phone that uh, the application crashes uh, and you need to use the settings button here to change the resolution in the camera. So uh, that's an issue, but I can change that with the phone that I'm making this recording on. And uh, also, if I go to the directory here, you can see the uh, photos uh, over here uh, that it's taken a picture of. And there's uh, videos there as well. So it has two little directories that you can keep a track of things in. So other than that, uh, this phone is suitable for actually operating the device and I will uh, look at doing a number of uh, um, videos uh, with the resolution changed and uh, to check the frame rates and what I'm going to do right now is see if I can actually place this into our tube here. Now I've noticed it's got a little bit warm and overheating may be a problem. Um, however, we won't need the LEDs on uh, when we run it in the supernova and uh, that might mean it will run a lot cooler. So we're going to pass this through here and see what we see. So that's very good. Very good. So it has a, quite a wide field of view. Oh, look at that. We have uh, Alexander Parkamov's book, Space Earth Human. A little bit upside down. <laughs> there we go. Ta -da. And that is looking all the way through into a reactor core. Now, actually, we might use the other camera for inspection in the middle of runs because we're less worried about damaging that one. So, we already have a purpose for that uh, camera. So there it is. Uh, I will attach to the end of this um, video uh, some examples at various resolutions and uh, you can inspect them for the quality. So this is 1280 by 720p and it's at 300% so it's on a 4K display. This is 1920 by 1080 and it is scaled uh, two times, that's 200%. And again, it's on this 4K recording. And the last recording is uh, at a resolution of 2592 by 1944. And that is just showing here in a window at 100%. Now I'm here in Premiere Pro where I edited the previous clips and if I step forward with my hand which I've got down here on the forward arrow and I go one two one two one two one two one two one two you can see uh, if I adjust the brightness there that This is a 30 frames per second uh, video, however, I have to press this twice on the 1280 by 720, which means it's at 15 frames. And indeed, the file is recorded at 15 frames per second. If I go to the 1920 by 1080, again, it's 15 frames per second. I'm having to tap twice to move forward one frame. I go to the full resolution that the depth tech is capable of doing. This is the 2592 by 1944. And I step forward. You can see it's still at 15 frames per second, but sometimes it's skipping frames. So I had to hit four times there for that to move forward. 
So that's uh, not very good at all. Now, the interesting thing is if I actually go to the uh, video recording I did of the actual device in action, uh, and I go forward, you can see for every frame I step forward, I get a new frame on the display, the real-time display on the Samsung Galaxy Note 2. Now, this is interesting because it might imply that the 15 frames per second was a limit of the capability of the recording software that comes with the depth tech. And if that's the case, uh, then I am going to try some screen recording software to try and capture the screen real time. And the advantage of actually doing this is we can, we can also record audio at the same time. So this is the application and it is a, called iRecorder and it has the ability to also record audio whilst you are capturing the screen and it has the ability to also capture one or uh, other of your cameras real time at the same time as whatever's going on on the screen. So this is what we're going to use. Uh, it has uh, the ability to access the higher resolutions, uh, 2K and 1080p, by watching an advert or paying something like £12. Uh, and it has a high quality uh, 16 megabits per second recording possibility. And you can record it for 30 frames per second or 60 frames per second. Now the camera is supposedly outputting images at 30 frames per second, so it doesn't seem to be any point in going beyond that. But it does mean that you can record with audio, so you can make commentary whilst you're doing things. So we're going to test this out. Okay, so I've got everything set up at 1280 by 720p, and I have an extra light source on here. And uh, we can see this is our feedback. And I'm going to move this into the supernova inside. And that's going to take a little bit of adjustment. Get my finger in there. And this is a bit of a concern, because I think you can see at the back here, the head of the magnetron has had some accident. Uh, there's a bit of debris on the ground there. Um, so I can actually use the zoom function, I guess, because we're only running at 720p. This will give us a better resolution um, on that, because it's a digital zoom, I guess. So with or without audio, I was able to achieve around about 23 frames per second. You can see here it is 22.92 using the screen recorder software on the Samsung S7. So the choice to do 30 frames per second really is to have it run to a screen on a phone and then record from that phone screen. This is not ideal. Um, the 23 frames per second here in a 30 frames per second video uh, exhibit some drop frames, obviously, um, but this is the highest frame rate uh, that we can get, it would seem. So thank you very much for your time, and I will see you in the next video.